G'day everyone, thanks for stopping by. Today, we are doing the big one. We're doing the Automate Torque Lockup Kit from MM 4x4. And now the reason I'm sitting down here in front of the Pajero dodging the dog is because it's filthy hot outside. It feels like it's gotta be about 40 something degrees. So, I'm gonna be sitting down here just in the shade to get this intro done. Over the last week or so since the Torque Lockup Kit arrived, what I've been doing is just paying attention to the fuel usage, going back with the forwards to work. It's around about 80 to 90 k's each way, and currently, with all the extra, you know, bull bars, bash plates, uh, the auxiliary battery over the back, and the fridge and all that sort of stuff that I've got in there. Uh, so with the fridge and all the other stuff that I've got in there, the campus belt, etc., etc., you know, solar panels, all that stuff on the roof, my fuel, my fuel usage has gone up probably around about two, two and a bit liters over what I found it was standard, and realistically. I'm just hoping to try and recover some of that with the addition of the torque lockup kit, obviously make it a bit more usable. And I'm turning the caravan, which is behind you. I'm really interested to see how it works there as well. All the feedback that I've seen thus far suggests that it completely transforms the vehicle, makes it that much more enjoyable to drive, uh, and for towing is, is excellent. So I'm hoping to get those results myself. Look forward to it. Now, as far as the install process, I'm gonna step you through that. If there's anything interesting you need to know, or, if you, or any particular challenges, we'll cover off those as well. I am gonna have a quick read of the manual. I believe I've got to take the kick panel off of the left hand side or the passenger side there. So we'll show you how to do that. It's a pretty straightforward process. Take you through the install and of course we'll take you through some comparisons, take you for a run and uh, I'll let you know what I think about it. Really looking forward to this one. I hope you are too. We'll get stuck in. I'm going to read some manual first. So 2009 plus which is your NT, NW, NX. So anything uh, NT and upwards basically. One thing I'm going to do is recommend you go and watch Marshall's video. Uh, if you're looking at getting one of these, definitely go and check out Marshall's video because obviously the guy who produces them is going to be able to do a better video of showing you the benefits and how the thing works and, and you know, all the different stuff like that. So he's got a really in-depth video. I think it's something like 30 minutes long. Uh, I will put a card up the top there to Marshall's video so you can have a look at that. It'll be down in the description as well. That's just one video I definitely recommend if you're interested in these. This is going to be the install and you're talking about my results and you know, what I think of it. But if you really want to understand how the Torque Lockup Kit or the Automate works, go and have a look at Marshall's video. It's really in-depth and it's, it's really quite good. You know, I'm, really, I'm, I'm not looking to replicate that. We're going to do sort of a high-level view of this rather than you know, getting really deep into the nitty-gritty and how it works and some of the things I'm not going to know anyway. Look, and if you're looking to pull the whole dash apart of your Pajero, I've got a series of three videos there showing you how to do that. Uh, of course, there's a video there as well showing you how to uh, uninstall and reinstall a head unit if you're interested in that as well. I've had enough of a reading the instructions to get me started. I know what I've got to do. I know the panels I've got to pull apart. I'm just going to take out the door sill now. But it is literally just a case of grabbing it and pulling upwards. There we go. It just pops straight up. Just up the back there. You can see this is the section we need to move. This is our kick panel and there is a little tab there. I'm just going to get down here. It's going to Pop that little, yeah, we can just get behind that with the screwdriver. Just pop that out, there we go. Just pull this section at the same time. You're fine. See there, that's just like a little push screw thing. Goes in through that hole, pushes in like that. Now, just by chance that you've got one, there may be another push there, another one of those push pin things there to hold that carpet and that uh, bottom of your Drive box up, mine is gone. So I'm gonna pull that carpet down there. While we're here, we're just gonna remove this inner kick panel as well. And a bit of wear and tear here, but it is just one screw. I'll do the same on the other side. Screw out, we'll stick that in our console, come and use for something. Okay, just leave it that back, pull it down and outwards to you. We'll come out there. All right, so that's all done. We are just gonna peel back this carpet, sort of pull down under the dash section there, and just roll it back. We've got that done. I can also notice that I am missing one of the clips that holds this foam in. Uh, you can see just here, it should be a little clip in there, because we actually have one in there. So what I'm going to do is just apply a slight backward pressure on this just to get that to actually pop off the thing. Actually, it's just pulled straight over that. Pull that foam up and out. There's our clip there, which doesn't want to come off. 
There's our little clip, you can see it just flares out to hold that foam down. So up the back, as per the instructions, you can see this is our ECU. We've got bolt there, two on either side of those, so we need to undo those. They are 12 mil. You need to buy myself a kit where I can keep these all separate and in order. Shatter that onto a short extension. Go. They're on reasonably tight, so two ends. Two on the other side. Once you back these off, it's going to be by hand. I was going to say hand job, but some of my viewers probably not a wise thing to say. They'd be onto that quick smart. I'm just going to pull that towards us. There we go. And just drop that down like that. And we will be removing this plug. So once you drop this down, it's actually going to be on the right. Let's give it a bit of a squeeze there and pull. There we go, and that's out. So here's our instructions. You can see they are very clear. So with this facing us, we notice that we've got a black wire on the left-hand side. If we look at that, hopefully you can see we have a black wire on the left-hand side. So we are gonna go straight along and we're gonna cut the red one and then the green one there as well. So again, instructions are really clear, red and green. So you keep it facing the same direction it was when it come out. Black wire there, and we go red, and we have green there. Now slide the scissors up there. These are gonna be the world's shittest scissors, I think. But they are working. Peel that back. Because we are going to be soldering back on this end and the other end, we're gonna basically be putting something in line with this. We are gonna give ourselves a reasonable amount of length there. So there's a bit of extra tape on there, we just want to remove that. Just be careful not to cut any of the wires, etc. We'll get rid of that tape. And we'll go around, we'll disconnect that battery. And we'll get stuck in. What we're going to do, we're actually going to remove the negative. That's an easier one to get to for me. Grab our red wire. These are fairly thin sort of wires. So there's our red one there. I'm just gonna cut it up. Out there. We're gonna go across to the green one. I'm gonna separate that so we can get to it. There you go. So you can see that green wire there. We're gonna keep those cuts about the same. So we have the same working distance. Okay. Green and red, you can see there. There's our red and we'll Bend our green up. Now I don't know what that temperature is, but it feels like it's got to be about 40 out here, so it's absolutely filthy. So we are going to have ourselves a drink. And the best things I reckon you can ever do with the four-wheel drive stick a fridge in it. Bloody brilliant. Uh, now if you have a preference for a different coloured sort of beverage, it's great just having them on hand. So much better it's filthy out here. Okay, back to the grind. Okay, so we're in our little box of tricks here. We need the one with the little resistor on it, something like that. There's our little inline resistor. You can see that there. So that's what we're going to be working with. There's a couple of screws. We need to put that somewhere. This is going to heat up, so we need to find somewhere just to position that. Now, what we're actually chasing are these wires. This is all covered off in the instructions, so you're not going to be able to really get this wrong. What we're going to do is just get down there and strip some of that green and black. I'm going to just pull these off because they've already been stripped for us. Well and truly. So there's our red and green that we've just cut back there. So again, with the plug pulled out facing you, you'll see the black one on the left there. And you'll see your red and green. So we just need to strip a little bit off either end of those. Okay, just go easy with stripping these because they are pretty thin sort of wise I think you will cut those relatively easy so I probably should have gone and got my proper strippers but we'll get there there you go point in case just like that there we go. these top ones these top ones are going to be the pain in the backside up here 
least you don't have a lot of room to work with. It is filthy out here. I don't know if I've mentioned that already, but it's absolutely horrendous. So we're just going to go one at a time. As per the instructions, just going to take a little bit off these just so they're not so long. Just going to do that for each of them. Okay, so that top red one needs to be yellow. And I'm probably just going to twist all these together so I get them out of the way. Green one at the top is brown. Red one, the connector is orange. That leaves us with the black for the green at the connector. We'll solder these. I'll just quickly solder these up and then we'll insulate them with some electrical tape because I can't find my bag of shrink wrap. Difficult to see in here without much light. And what you want to do is make sure you're heating the wire so it sucks up that solder. I am applying a little bit to the soldering iron and then using that just to transfer the heat into the wire and then just feeding some solder into the wire. Keep your soldering on it for a sec just to let it suck that up. We're done. What I'm going to do is just go in, just clip the tops of these wires just to get rid of any sharp edges. I did bail out a little bit earlier because it was just too hot working out here. So I'm kill that neighbour's dog again across the road. So whilst it has cooled down, it's still ridiculously humid. And we've got a storm coming, so we'll see how that goes. So this might be, end up being a two-day job depending on what the weather does. So I'll tape those all together just to neaten it up a little bit. Give it a bit of extra mechanical strength. Now because these are going to have to run off together, we're just going to bend that like that and get all those wires coming out the same spot and throw a little bit of tape around there. Again, all this just adds a little bit of mechanical strength. Stops the wires getting pulled on, tugged on. And he's going to make it a little bit easier to manage there as well. Keeping in mind that it is a bit of a pain in the backside working under here. But I believe the benefits will be well and truly worth it. Just unbag our little resistor here. A couple of little self-tapping screws in the baggie with it as well. So you can see those. Now this can heat up as per the instructions. So we need to get this up and out of the way. To give you a look at the instructions, you can see where that's mounted up in that kick panel there. This is where we undid those left bolts for the ECU unit that we pulled out. They screwed it up there. Now I know a number of people have said they're a bit concerned about screwing up there, but we're going to follow the instructions. It says it must be mounted to a large metal surface. Now that's going to provide cooling uh, properties to that. It's going to act like a heat sink. There are two screws there. Common sense type instructions. We just need to get in. Now probably not going to be able to film this because it is so tight in there. But I'm going to get in, drill that, and we'll show you once we've got it mounted. Okay, and now we're getting rained on. Now with these screws that are provided, you are going to need to I guess screw them through the resistor there. They are very tight. I'm just going to do that first to work that hole. Just going to get through just a little bit like that. I'm going to get through just a little bit like that so I can find the hole. And we'll screw it the rest of the way in. So we've bailed out into the caravan because it's absolutely flogging down outside. It's literally chucking everything at us today. We've had filthy heat. Uh, some horrendous humidity now we've got the wind and the rain so we'll get this on at some point so there she is in the back there you can see that's mounted up that's nice and solid it's not going anywhere just watching that wire at the top now we do just need to be careful with these wires when we reseat these where they go because we don't want that making contact with the back of that otherwise we'll might melt through that and create us a short so that's that done now and we've just gone back in and retaped that harness so it looks back to original. We've got those wires popping out there. They're going over to that resistor. And uh, there we go. Plug of that back in where it came from originally. Just a press fit, you'll hear that click there. We'll flip that back over. So we're going to keep this 
harness up and out of the way. Just gonna run those out the top and bring those ones around as well. Just gonna bring those underneath like that. And the more coming at the top, refit this onto those bolts. And just stick our nuts back on there. Couple on this side. Now if you're gonna be routing any other wires, realistically I need to run some extra wires to another amplifier that I'm putting in for a sub over the back. I really should be running all those wires now while I've got the carpet up, but since it's been raining we've lost so much time, that's not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna cable tie them up out of the way. There is express instructions saying do not let anything touch that resistor. So keep it away from plastics, keep it away from wires, otherwise you might have an issue. If it melts through that insulation, you might have a problem. Realistically, you should have all of your wires fused anyway, in case you encounter that situation. But if we can avoid it, we will. So what I've done is actually routed that green wire that comes out of that resistor up over that mount there that's going to have that plug that holds onto that side kick panel. So there's no chance for that wire to drop down and come back and touch that resistor. Red one's just run out the bottom, gravity's going to sort that one out. As for this end of the harness, this is going to head over towards the centre of the car. I'm just going to route that up over the top there. Take that round, there is a nice big harness that you can see up here. So you can follow that across. I'll just tuck that in up the back here. I've got a heap of wires and stuff going on here. So just going to tuck that up there for now. And what that's going to do, that's going to allow us to put the rest of the stuff back together and get it out of the way. So what we need to do with this, with the plug, is push it through from the back. So it's got little wings on it there. So we are gonna fold those down, just push that in from the back. That'll pop through, and those little wings will pop out inside, and then you can just press fit that onto the actual bolt in there. That's a foam piece in, just gonna push that carpet back up underneath. There we go, that's all in and fitted. I'm not going to put everything together yet because the instructions don't say so. So we'll follow those. Alright, so this is what our switch and LED harness looks like. You can see that's got the little LED on it. Alright, beautiful. I'll crack that open, eh? As you can see there's a little LED there, which is also switch. Very nice, eh? I like that. These are all really nicely joined. All the connections look good. Uh, yeah, why it looks like it's, it's good quality, there's no issues, no concerns about any quality of any of this. So here's a little tip as to what those little plugs for. It says install plug if control unit is removed. And so if we've got to do anything, you need to remove something and you need to have this unit go back to, I guess, operating as standard, that's when you're going to use these little plugs. We now need to remove the shifter. So what we need to do is uh, grip the housing. This is a silver piece down the bottom. It says pull down firmly to expose the retaining screws. So, oh. <laughs> not so firm, but anyway, I think we've got a screw on either side. No, we've got two screws on one side, so we're just going to back these off. They are just a Phillips head screw. All right, now just be aware, normally I'm not too concerned about losing screws because you know you can usually find something in your screw box or whatever, but these are fairly specific, so put these somewhere safe. We'll be losing those because your chances of finding another one to match will bugger all none. Don't drop them, don't lose them. Remove the screws, lift off the gear lever. There we go, so that's easy enough. Now somebody asked me how to do this before, and I didn't really know how to do it, so I didn't have any advice to offer, but that's easy. You can see where those retaining screws go. I think he had a loose piece here. Uh, now I think what he said in the end was he was able, he took it to uh, Mitsubishi. I think they levered this off then put some glue or something under it and then reseated it but mine's not loose and we don't have any rattles there so if you need to do that pull that section down the bottom get to your two screws and then just lift that off it's that easy need to remove our four-wheel drive shifter just by grabbing it and rotating anti-clockwise there you go so that's off so it's just threaded on all right so we're now just down to moving our drink holder now this is where I've actually got my radio mounted, so for everybody else you can usually just pull these up. I've had to disconnect the radio and that will just pop straight out. Now in here there are a couple of screws that we need to remove. So we've got this one here 
and this one here they are just Phillips head. Same as you would if it had the buttons on it, so just push this down here on top, that'll let you move that one, and then this one you can just push down with your hand and that'll move. So into neutral, we are, we've still got a handbrake on, and this is into four high uh, with a lock center. Just grab the rear of the console, lift, and pull back a little bit. There are some little tabs here at the and there are some little tabs here at the front. So when you lift the rear and pull it backwards, they'll pop out. And we're just gonna know what that tape is for. We are just gonna wiggle that up, and there is a connector under here. So once you've lifted this, I'm gonna turn it to you a little bit. You can see there is a wire running here. And there's a connector on the back. So it's gonna reach up, give that a squeeze, unplug it, and that'll come out. There's our connector just there. Got a little bit of room to work with when you lift the rear of that. Now it's probably also a good time to get in and give this a bit of a clean out. Look at that filth that is in here. So we've got some chewy that's been in there for I don't know how long. Okay, what have we got? Troll Gummy Pizza. Never heard of it. So uh, there's five slices in there apparently. Now here's my little Azuto cordless vacuum to the rescue. It is raining on and off. It's just finished spitting, so I don't want to drag out one of the electric vacuums. So this is going to be perfect. So we'll use that to clean out this console. You're probably never going to get in here again. You can see this is our shifter here. This is our four-wheel drive lever just off the side. Then a little bit closer, you're going to see two plugs with wires coming out here. And that shift connector is down on the floor there. So we need to get in and disconnect that one just there. Get some light in there. You can see that connector with all those little wires coming off the back. And you can see there's a little button there that we just need to push on to get that to release. Remember, I don't have that many hands to hold light, the torch, the camera, and get this done. But you are gonna have fun with this, but we've got that separated. Just trying to fish that wire out so we can get these plugged in. There's one there, so there's plenty on it. Uh, once you get hold of it, that one is gonna plug in there. And this one is gonna be the fun one, I think. Trying to get this one plugged into the back. Ugh. You can see this wire has a little bit of a bend on it, so it kind of wants to go nice and flat anyway. I think if you just put a bit more of a bend on it, it's kind of a little bit like a fishing expedition. Mm. <laughs> there we go. For me, it was a combination of reaching down and fishing that in line, and then literally reaching up from the back around in the footwell and just putting a little bit of pressure on it, but you can see what it does to the hands. It's, uh, I've got skin off everywhere though, but there we go. Down the bottom here, this is where that rest of that harness comes from that we mounted up in where we cut into the control unit, cut into the ECU. So that needs to plug into the back of the box. That is the deciding factor, I guess, of where we're gonna go. So it's gonna need to end up fitting up under here uh, Marshall, if you could do it, mate, a little bit of extra wire, maybe another 6 to 12 inches of this. Because what I'd really like to do is possibly mount this in here somewhere. Uh, maybe mount it underneath, get the control box in up under the front there, possibly. Somewhere so it's in and out of the way. Um, I understand that, you know, you may need to disconnect it or something at some point. Uh, but I would really like to get it up in under there. You know, just pulling that cup holder out and those couple of screws to get in here is, would be reasonably simple. So it looks like we're going to have to go up over there, which I, I've got lots of radios and stuff going on over there, so that's going to challenge me a little bit. We'll figure it out. But I would like that little bit extra to give me that little bit more of an option so I can, as far as getting this mounted somewhere else. So what, what I need to do now is 
route this part of the harness out that left side footwell. So I've got it near where that one's coming in. And then the rest of that wire is gonna go out to the right side. We're gonna go up to that LED switch. I'm also gonna route this one from my OBD2 socket, which is up under here on the driver's side. I'm gonna route that out there as well. We're gonna have that on the extension, and which is also a splitter. So we're gonna plug that into our OBD2. One of these is gonna to run to our current OBD2 reader. I'm gonna stash that up under the driver's footwell there. And I'm gonna run this across the back uh, here. I'm gonna run that across from one side of the footwell, from the driver's side footwell over to the passenger side footwell, because this needs to plug into that control box as well. So we're just trying to get all of our plugs that are gonna go into our control box over just on the passenger side footwell. Uh, near the transmission tunnel there. So that's that's what I'm uh, efforting at this point. So there is a nice clear tunnel through here, so you can usually just pop stuff through. If you've got an extra pair of hands, for somebody to give you a hand with that and be wiggling the wire at one side while you're trying to do a bit of fishing from this side, that'd be nice. There's our cable from our OBD2. We've got our cable, which is coming from our footwell, which is all the cutting and shutting we did over here. Need to get this one through here from in the transmission tunnel there. Again, I've got lots of wires up here that you may not have to cope with because I've got the stereo and all the radios running through there. Okay, that's not going to work for me. So what I'm going to do is rather than trying to route it out the back, I've just got too many wires, amplifier cables, radio cables, all that sort of stuff. So that's a bit of a cluster. <laughs> for me over the back there. So I'm going to resort to plan B, which is literally pulling on the side here. You can see I'm just pulling on that there. I'm going to push this down the side. Get that to go just under there. There's carpet and all sorts of stuff there, so you have to finagle a little bit. There we go. So we've got that out there. So what I've done is just pulled on this plastic here, pulled it out, and then fed that wire down from the inside, grabbed it up underneath, and then pulling it out. Now be aware that you've actually got two layers of plastic here. You've got the one on the inside, carpet goes up in between the middle of those, and then you've got the plastic that you can see here. So it's basically a down, up, over the carpet, back under, and out. It's pain in the backside, but realistically, you can see how quickly I got that done versus trying to round out the back. Again, if you've got a standard Pajero, you may not have those, those issues. You may have a nice route to go straight out the back. I don't because I've got stereos and wires and uh, radios and all sorts of stuff plugged in here. So it's just making it a little bit that harder for me. I'm just going to start plugging these in. So that's a six pin, so that's the end one there. So you can see that's the end one there. We have the eight pin. This is the one coming from the transmission box. Just pull a little bit out. That is gonna go in there. And this one is the one coming from our OBD2 reader. There are two four points. Apparently it doesn't matter which one we plug those into. It does say here the control module includes two four pin CAN bus ports. It says for future modifications or future options, so that could be interesting. So we had our six pin here. This is the one that's going up over to the footwell that was connected up to the transmission ECU there. This one is the eight pin. Now this is the one that's going up here and into our transmission tunnel that we plugged in over there somewhere. And the four pin has just been routed up and across, through across the top of that tunnel there, out the other side, and we're going to plug that into our OBD2, but that's roughly what she's going to look like. You can see the location of that, that's the passenger footwell, so I need to find somewhere to put that. I think for now, we're just going to stash it up in over the back, because I've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on up there, and uh, I don't have a lot of room. It's just going to turn back up, in, and it's going to sit up in there, in behind the dash because I think that is gonna be about as good as it's gonna get. I can still access it just by taking away that one panel. Uh, and it's not gonna get in the way of everything else. So you can see that just 
stuck in the back there. So there's our ports, so if we need to get to those we can. All right, so that's it. We're gonna get that panel fitted back up. and Get this finished up. Putting these back in, just make sure you get that top tab fitted in. And then you've just got these two push things on the back. So you're gonna need to push it up reasonably high to get that to attach. Of course, if you've got other crap like me coming out of here, you really need to give it a push. There we go. So with this one, it is literally just a case of, where are we? That way. It's gonna go in like that. This section, this section is gonna run out and go along our footwell. It's gonna pop this over, there's a hole at the back. Now take this plug, push it in, it's gonna sit in like that. Perscape. So we've got that sit in. You see it will push up nice and flush against the, the rubber there. Goes up around the door seal, and it'll look something like that. And you just take this, line up, this is just your sill. Just line her up. Give that a little bit of a push here to make sure it sits underneath. And then, just give her a thump, and down she goes. We're on the home stretch, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Down the bottom here, we've routed our OBD2 splitter. So I'm gonna unplug the OBD2 that I've currently got in it. We'll give you a look at that, actually. Here's my OBD2 reader that I've got. This is about 14 bucks. This is the one that works for me for the Pajero. Providing that you select the right protocol. If you just leave the Talk app to be doing its own thing and do an auto as far as the protocol that it's gonna use for communicating with this, you're gonna throw codes and it's gonna go into limp mode. So I'll put up on the screen there the one that I use. I think it's 24 bit, 5000K something, something, something. I'll put up on the screen the one that I use because previously it threw codes and it made me go into uh, limp mode and the worst possible time, it was running fine, and all of a sudden it just chucked a code, uh, everything went haywire, and it went into limp mode going around a corner, so it was uh, not real exciting. Hopefully I've got still got a, some footage of that, what that did to the dash. If I have, I'll put that up on the screen. So that's the OBD2 reader, it's a, uh, I think it was an Elm 27 or something. Again, look, I'll put it down in the description uh, and I'll give you a bit of a closer look at that. But that basically is the OBD2 reader I'm using. It's about 14 bucks, 15 bucks off eBay. But this one doesn't turn off when there's a voltage drop. So this one will stay on all the time. I have left it on, it hasn't had any issues with the battery. But what I did, I went out and I bought a cable like this. That plugs into your OBD2 socket up under the dash there. This plugs into the other end, and all it does, other than giving you an extension cable, so all I used to do is just tuck this up into the footwell there, but it gives you an on-off switch. So it's just an inline on-off switch which allows you to turn that on and off as you so choose. Now, somebody has got in touch with me who's got a nice little panel that they make up for that card holder thing that nobody uses. So I'm having a chat to him as well, Colin his name is, and he's got some, he basically makes up these switch panels uh, puts all sorts of stuff in USB sockets, uh, throughputs for your RJ45, for your radio microphones, which is going to come very handy for me. So I'm talking to him about that and just trying to get something designed up that'll fit and work for my car. Another thing that I want to do is get an, a, another switch, that, similar to the other Pajero switches that we've got, and have a switch on that panel for turning my OBD2 reader on and off, but we'll worry about that later on. So for now, I'm gonna plug this into the OBD2 socket. So just in case you didn't know, this is our driver's side footwell, and here is our, and here is our OBD2 reader, so, uh, or, or socket output. So what we're gonna do is just take our splitter, and it does only go one way because it's an odd shape, and just, push that up onto there. You can see that is going out and over through that, across that tunnel. So we're just gonna feed that up in under there and that's gonna go in behind the panel once we reseat that. And normally what I would be doing here would be having the ABD2 reader plugged in there and then just tucking that up in there as well. But now we've got this splitter, need to plug it into that. And you can see the shape of these, they are a little bit wider at the top end uh, than they are at the bottom, so you can only Put them together one way. Again, we're gonna just tuck that all up 
in over the top there's plenty of room there my little reader is going to go up there as well just like that and then what I do is I tend to just have that plug just tucked up in the corner there and then when I want to use it which is typically only when I'm towing I'll come out and I'll just reach up and uh, switch that on and away we go realistically this is probably going to be the easiest part of the install altogether so again this is the other part of the harness that has the LED switch on it that uh, we've connected up in front of the uh, the gear shifter there so we've routed that out the back this is going to run it up and uh, take it up over a couple of things here in the footwell and just basically round it up the front there go over the top of a couple of things so we make sure it stays up and out of the way it's not going to come down and make any contact with the pedals hello so just go easy because it is a reasonable size and you definitely do not want to get this caught on something and be breaking it off there's plenty of things for you to go up and behind so it doesn't droop down and just fire over to this side of the car as you can and go behind something as close to this side kick panel as possible and that's just going to keep it right up and out of the way this is where we're at now so what we need to do is just route this up the inside what you can do is just pop this little panel here like that once you've popped it just pull it towards you then just grab your rubber and just pull it towards you don't have to pull it all the way out just far enough and you can see we're going to get a little bit of room to route that wire up around the back there so we're just going to tuck that down if you just bring it around just bring it around like that and just tuck it up and then what you'll find is you can usually just push it up under there and they'll drop into place nice little groove just in here where you can see I've got a heap of wires and stuff running up you're pretty much just going to push it all the way in there run it all the way up the inside there and then push it around the back of that tab there you don't want to be in front of that otherwise you're going to stop that panel going in and then we're just going to pop it out up the top there we'll sort of reseat your rubber just like that that's going to hang out the top just nicely so you can see how that's going to end up just there we'll just go back and push our panel back in line up those tabs push her in give her a whack here we go so that panel's back in and we've got that just sitting out the top there we're just going to pull that rubber back again and that is just going to slide up on the inside there just like that we'll move that up as far as we can we've got to be where there is a strap for the airbag just pushing that cable just into that well now i'm just going to need a hand here oh no i think we're going to be okay just trying to get that pushed in there so it's not imposing on anything so you can see that's how the switch is going to sit all your wire is going to be routed in that channel and we are just going to reseat that rubber and just to show you how that goes you can see that is our LED slash switch there when I was trying to get this back in I couldn't do it with one hand so I had to put you down but you'll find there is a slight gap between the back of the LED switch uh, and where it needs to fit in so where that rubber was effectively routed anyway so if you just get that lined up it basically slides into the slot behind the switch here so if you just get it lined up and then give it a nice good push you'll find that we'll just pop in we end up with ever so slightly bit of a bulge there but uh, nothing too hideous and uh, we've got all that rubber mounted back up so that's the last thing that's everything mounted up what I need to do is go and put these panels all back on then we'll have a look at just going through the test and we'll take it for a run look we are ready to go we're about to uh, kick this off and just go into a diagnostic mode see if we can get you set up so you can see the dash as we'll go through this so we'll go out we'll connect our battery back up we'll come in we're doing diagnosis and we'll see how we go okay we're back battery is connected it's going to give it a couple of minutes to, to do its thing before we start trying to do a diagnosis let it do its thing because we have just reconnected the battery now the ASC is off if you ever disconnect your battery and you connect it back up and your ASC shows off it's going to be fine it's going to do that for probably about the first 5k's or so maybe not even just take it for a drive it'll eventually go off don't worry about it so on our 
cruise control, we're going to press and hold this button for five seconds. So through this diagnosis process, it's just going to be like a self-test. We're going to see this here. This is our taco. It's going to go zero to one, two, three, four, five, and six. Whilst it's on number one, we're expecting to, expecting to see the speedo go up to somewhere between 80 and 90. When that moves to two, we're looking to see 80 to 90. When it goes to three, we're looking to see 100 to 130. Four is between 12 and 16. Five, 20 to 25, and six is 40 to 50. Now, if we miss this, we can cycle this again and go through and have a look. So I'll try and read this out as it goes through the test. So for the first one, this will go to one, and we're expecting to see between 80 and 90. So here we go, just pressing the button now. Hold in for five seconds. Our little LED light comes on, there we go. So it's on one, we're looking at oh, just under 80. Two, staying the same. Three, somewhere between 100 and 130, so we're on 100. Four, we're looking for 12 to 16. Mm, a little bit high. Five, 20 to 25. Again, a little bit high. Six, 40 to 50. And again, ever so slightly high. All right, done. So it says at the end of the sequence, uh, diagnosis is complete. If uh, all values are within the expected range with a small tolerance, except uh, for example, 98 instead of 100, the unit is working correctly. So look, I'm gonna call that correct. They were all close enough to what we we're expecting to see. We are actually gonna turn the car on. Again, don't worry about all these lights. This will happen when you've had your battery disconnected. So what we're looking for here so we're going to put this into drive, so we've still got the park brake on. We're into drive, and what you can see, now we're in drive here. You see we've got the number one illuminated. That tells us that the lockup kit is working. If I reach over here and just push the LED, which is a little switch, you'll see that one will disappear. There it goes. So that the lockup kit is now off, non-functioning. We just hit that button again. You can see that little one just coming up there. So if we put a bit of shade on it, you can see that. We hit that again, and it'll go out. So lockup kit off, LED off. Little one comes on, blue light on, means we're running. What it basically says now is take it for a quick test drive, do at least five minutes to let the uh, transmission temperature warm up. Okay, so our little LED is gonna flash until we are warm and ready to go. We'll put it in drive. And what we're looking to see is just to make sure that it is changing through correctly. And then we'll see, the, we'll see the LED light will just come on when the torque converter is being locked up. And what we're going to do is just go into sports mode and make sure our shifter is still working. All right, let's go out for a run. So that LED light is blinking or pulsing, as you can see. So we do know that it's waiting for us to warm up the temperature of the transmission. Now, generally, as a rule, dislike it when people will drive and talk to cameras. So I'm not going to be holding the camera. I'm just going to. Set it up over there. I'll keep talking to you, but I'm going to be paying, my, paying attention to the road. Our little LED light has gone off. So we'll back her out, we'll put her in drive, and we'll see if she comes on. And then I'm literally just going to take it for a drive and just tell you what I think straight off the bat and uh, what sort of feel I get for it, because I've not driven a car with a torque lockup kit before. So I'm very interested to see what it feels like. And I'm not sure what the default settings are, but I don't think we're going to notice until we get up to a decent sort of speed. So transmission temperature is around about 44 degrees, so it's still nice and cool. That should come up soon enough. We can only do 60, but those gear changes felt a little bit smoother. Interesting, I didn't expect that. Just going to take it out onto one of the expressways that's near home. Just get it up to over 80 and we'll go to 110 or to see how she runs there. Well, we have uh, recently, as in probably less than 10,000 k's ago, had a transmission service, a fluid flush. Had that done. So all of up to 60, not really noticing any differences. Okay, so we've just hit about yeah, 40 odd k's. That light's come on, so the torque lockup's engaged. That change from second, oh wow, okay. It, it, the change from third to fourth, I'm not even feeling. It's um, so smooth, okay, it's just dropped to fifth. It's all in 80k zone, we're about to hit 110. That change from third to fourth, I can't even feel that anymore, that's just so smooth. All the others, 
feel fairly similar. Yeah. I like that. Um, just put the foot down to catch up to 110. And that's the quickest I've ever felt the car go. Keep in mind that I've got the iDrive in there as well. These feel like a nice combination. Okay, so that wraps up the installation of the Automate into the Pajero. Now, I've had a few days just to be driving around, tested it out, I've taken a few runs. It's pretty much only been local stuff. I just want to give you a quick understanding of my experience thus far. I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference in, I guess, the drivability of the car. Certainly not under that 40 k's. Once that we hit that 40 k's and the torque lockup kit engages, you feel just a little, a little grab or something. I think you can definitely feel when that torque lockup kit. You can definitely feel when the converter locks up. So driving at low speed operates as per normal. On the freeways, it feels like I've got a little bit more poke, a bit more confidence in you know, putting the foot down, accelerating around another car, something like that. Uh, this tra the transition from third to fourth is ultra, ultra smooth. I'm not sure whether this has made any difference here or not. That's one of the things I've noticed. Coming down a hill, I'm noticing that's holding onto the gears, but I feel like I've got better engine braking. Obviously, there's a direct connection between the engine and the rear wheels now, so hey. Uh, so heading downhill, uh, it gives me a lot more confidence. So I'm really keen to try this out in low range and maybe bugger around with the settings a little bit and see whether I can get that set up to really work that engine braking. That'll be great going downhill. I haven't done enough mileage yet uh, at this point to tell whether there's going to be any improvements on fuel economy, so I'll have to do that later on. I'm about to start a work week on Friday, uh, so doing that 180k return trip, that'll give me a pretty quick idea. We are averaging around about 12 and a half litres. I'm hoping, you know, 11 and a half, 11 would be nice. Anything above that would be perfect. The other thing it feels like it's doing is just holding onto those gears a little bit longer. So if I'm going up an incline, rather than going from third, possibly to fourth, and dropping back and kind of losing that power. It feels like it's holding that, I guess that power range, just that little bit better. And certainly feels like when I put the foot down, it'll drop back gears a little bit better and grab hold of that lower gear and take off. Look, at this stage, this could all be in my head and it may be no different. The one thing I really, really notice though is when I'm on a freeway and I go to overtake something, certainly when it's locked up, um, before, if I used to put my foot down, it was obviously the slippage I was feeling. It almost feels like you know, those rear tyres are slipping a little bit, you know, you're in the wet and you're just waiting for it to grip. And the car sounds a little bit different. Now when I put my foot down, it it goes. Um, I've also got the iDrive in there, so this is making a nice combination for me for drivability. Uh, but it will pick up, it'll grab, and it'll take off. And if, if it's inclined to do so, it'll drop that gear and take off even better. So, uh, you know, so far the changes have only been very minor, and some of them possibly not noticeable. Where I'm really looking forward to it is getting it over on the beach, which I might do in another week or so, doing some four-wheel drive tracks, and most importantly, taking the caravan out for a run. So look, at this stage, haven't noticed a huge amount of difference. Those, those little things that I just mentioned are the things that are standing out at this point, but it's hard to tell. They're fairly minor at this stage. Uh, nothing is standing out hugely, but uh, it does feel like it feels like a bit, it does make the Pajero feel like a little bit of a nicer car to drive though. That's the Automate from MM 4x4. That's the install. We'll get around to doing some, I guess, some testing in the videos. We'll check out trans temps and that sort of stuff. I've already had done some, and I've been a little bit surprised with the results, specifically coming downhill. But anyway, but anyway, we'll get around to that later on. This is just the install. I hope it's helpful. It's a really easy thing. Realistically, you know, give yourself a couple of hours. The hardest thing was trying to get that little plug back in, in the front of the shifter there, routing the cables and all that sort of stuff, real easy. You've only got two wires to cut, four, four wires to solder. It doesn't get much easier than that. And I've got to tell you at this point, I'm, I think it's already worth the dollars. Uh, but we'll cover that off in future videos. Thanks very much for stopping by. We'll catch you on the next one. While you're still here, I've received the box in the mail, and I think I know what this is, so we're just gonna open this up. Just LED lights for review from Oxbeam. Now, okay. Now what you're gonna notice is there's two in there. And what you'll also notice is they sent me two lots of two which means I've got a set for giveaway. So, we'll figure out how we're gonna do that. Not gonna make anybody jump through any hoops. Just gonna post up a quick giveaway video, and then we'll get a set of these out to somebody. Now these are, okay, there's a bit more to these than I thought. I'm not real sure. So there are H11. Those are also H11s. Just wanna have a look at the connector, because these may fit in the high beam and the low beam for the Pajero, the same as the other ones that I had. I'll be able to tell you pretty quick. Yep, okay, so, 
these are going to fit in your high beam and your low beam right? because they both got the same connector but it doesn't have the little connection the little bits of plastic in there that make it specific to one or the other so these are going to fit high beam or low beam and we're going to test those out and we're going to give a set of these away real soon uh, so look for that video in the next I don't know, week or so, see if I can get out and do some testing sooner rather than later. When we get around to it, I'll let you know and we'll, we'll have a chat about it and we'll get a giveaway happening. Really looking forward to uh, giving those a bit of a test. That's it guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll catch you on the next one.